moment in our lives because he has been so good to us. He's a loving God. He, he's, he's a merciful God. And there's no other God besides him. So we are going to start. Let's just start. Let's, let's start committing today in God's hands. Yeah. As you have come, you have come to come and fellowship with your God, with God Almighty. As you have come, you have come to with a heart of gratitude unto God. As you have come, you have come to just lay it all before his feet and just say, Lord, take control. So let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. Thank you, Lord, that you are a good, good God, and there's no other God besides thee. We are thanking you, Father, for such a beautiful day you have created, making us to see this day, Lord. We give you praise and honor, Lord, unto your mighty name. We say thank you, Father. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for making it possible for us to come together again in your name, Lord, to give you all the praise. Hallelujah unto your mighty name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to the maker of all the universe. Hallelujah to the God Almighty. Hallelujah to creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah, Lord, the God who was, who is, and who is to come. Glory be unto your mighty name. We honor you, Father. We adore you. Thank you, Father. We are praying, Lord, that today, Lord, in our service, Father, we just have it your own way. That's what we want, Lord. We just want you to take control. We surrender the service unto you, Lord. We say, have it your own way in the name of Jesus. Father, that your name will be glorified. Your name will be highly exalted, Lord, in our praise and worship, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, you will reach out to each and every one of us, even in the sermon today. You will touch every heart that, we, that is here today. Every heart that we tune in, Lord, on Facebook, Lord, on any other form of media. Father, you will touch those hearts as well in Jesus' name. No one, Lord, will go as they come. They will go, Lord, as you turn their life around in the name of Jesus. Take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I'm just going to encourage us with Psalm, Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 talks about God's goodness. His goodness is evermore. His goodness is forever and ever. And if you look at your life alone, your life just think back and see how god has been good to you even those times when you think oh god is not there but he is there and he's always there he's always been there he, he said he will never leave you he will never forsake you and that's that's his words and his words never return to him unaccomplished so let's just let's just i'm going to read psalm 23 just to encourage us and just meditate on it meditate on god's goodness and his mercies and his faithfulness Psalm 123, and I'm reading from New King James Version. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a very familiar um, psalm. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Ever. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. And that is that is God's goodness over us all. So let's just embrace this moment as we go into our praise and worship. Let's embrace this moment. Let's give it all unto God. All gratitude unto the God Almighty. Amen. Praise God. Worship team.
thank God for that freedom and liberty. Thank you this morning. We thank our God, our Heavenly Father, first and foremost. And this morning, as Patricia has been saying, we're dwelling and reflecting on the goodness of God because he has been good to us. He has been protecting us. He has been providing for us in our going out and our coming in. He's always there for us. He's always looking out for us. The Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. I was reflecting this morning about David encouraging himself in the Lord. And we are called to do the same thing, to encourage ourselves in the Lord. If you put the news on, it's all negative and bad news. But we know that we have an everlasting King of Kings and a Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, again, I'd like to remind you this morning, unfortunately, sorry, you guys can't sing, but you can watch the rest of us sing. But uh, I'm sure you're with us in the spirit. You can hum, you can clap, and yes, you don't need the words of the song to praise God, as we all know. So just sit back and reflect on God and worship God in the spirit. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Nothing is impossible for you to do, Almighty God. Be glorified, be exalted, be lifted up on high, Lord God. Eyes are 
things cannot be impossible for us in the name of Jesus. We exalt you, Father. We exalt you, King of Kings. We thank you, Lord, that we have you on our side, our Almighty God. We give you glory, Lord God. We give you all adoration, Lord God. We give you all exhortation this morning. Strength will arise as we wait upon the Lord. Hallelujah. say all the time just wave or clap to respond <laughs> amen we keep getting used to this outreach i'm used to saying you know trying to get response from you now i'm trying not to discourage you from saying anything <laughs> praise god you may be seated Hallelujah. i know when we look around today we listen to news go on multimedia, Facebook, and every other thing, all we hear, majority of what we hear is very negative, discouraging, and it's not that most of what people are saying is not true, because that's the truth. Coronavirus, as you are aware, in the country is rising. I think we are just uh, around 4,000 4, a day now, and um, that Raj reminded us on our WhatsApp group yesterday that uh, even though we are, the rate of infection is about where it was in May, but the death rate is low. We seem to forget that. That's good news, isn't it? You know, uh, 
if, if the death rate was high and people weren't dying at that time, we'll not be afraid because of the people were dying that brought fear to people, isn't it? And now God has done it in such a way that across the world and in Europe and in Africa and places like that, the rate of infection is high, but people aren't dying. You know? So we, we should be celebrating. That's good news. That is good news in itself. Praise God. So there are a lot of good news around that we seem to focus on the negativeness. The unfortunate thing is sometimes too, we Christians, we have to share some of this negative news. Whereas we are bearers of good news. The gospel means good news. The gospel means good news. In times where people are discouraged and fear is gripping people's heart, I want to encourage you. Don't be the one that helps to spread fear. There is hope. There is always hope in God. And so there are many good things that's happened since the lockdown. And uh, sometimes we don't talk a lot about it. We just we just stand up for one day or two and we move on and embrace fear. But today we just want to linger on a bit on God's goodness. The songs we've selected is to just to... I didn't discuss it with them actually. I just said pick one song that speaks of God's goodness. And everything seems to be about God's goodness. Uh, Patricia, I didn't discuss the title with her, but she picked, uh, she said, is it okay to read Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd. I said, yes, that's, that's the theme of my sermon. You know, our God is good and he's good all the time. So this morning I want to invite Deborah. Where is she? If she can take her microphone. Uh, Deborah have a testimony to give. You know, last week I said we would take one or two testimonies, but uh, I don't know whether I forced her to give or whether she was volunteered, but she's the one giving testimony today. I don't think I forced her. Uh, Deborah, uh, you have a testimony to give. Do you want to? What is it about? You came for my uh, birthday, March 22nd, isn't it? And then you were you were stranded at home. And then take it from there. What happened? Um, yes, yeah, so I came home for my parents' birthday in March. Uh, we couldn't go back to uni um, the following week. But then uh, everything closed down because of Corona, including um, my labs. So um, I meant to do lab work as part of my course from January to June, but the lab closed in March and the whole of uni was closed so I ended up just staying at home um, from March all up until this time. And so the your research work was supposed to be based on your six months work in lab and the lab, isn't it? Yes. So how what happens after that? Um, I was given two options, um, either to repeat the lab work from next January up until next July or to continue my work but as like an analytical research so looking at previous um, work from um, students in my lab or previous published work. And uh, when you heard that news you were very excited weren't you? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were full of faith and there was boldness in you was it? So in other words, there was fear yeah, I guess so, yeah. and panic. Yeah. I'm not sure what to do next. Yeah. So let's take it from there. What happened after that? Um, I spoke to my my supervisor for my project, um, and yeah, she presented the options with me. Um, I spoke to my parents um, as well. Um, they're usually very laid back, so they don't mind whatever option I chose. But eventually, I just um, decided to continue with my project, um, even though it was um, less research and more looking at past previous work. But my supervisor showed me that even though I'm looking at previous work, it hasn't really been 
properly analyzed yet so whatever i conclude is still um novel research um so yeah that was good okay so for the how long did it take you to do pull the work together um from march up until it was due in um in Ju at the end of july and then i did my presentation for it in august okay so fast forward to august now and then so uh, what was the testimony um so i finished in august i did my presentation and then is it two weeks ago now i think or like a week and a half ago um i got um an email with my results and so i was nervous i was at home alone with glory and so we opened it together and um, they said that i got a distinction for my whole degree thank you very much Deborah. And it's who, who did it? Amen. So that's to tell us that even in coronavirus, even in the lockdown, God is still good all the time. I'm sure next week, right, we have a testimony to give along that one, what God is doing. And many of you have stories of what God is doing. It doesn't reduce what you're going through. You know, we accept it. He strengthens us. He takes us through. But in the midst of all that, God is still doing something good. Amen. Uh, let's quickly take our notices. Okay. If it's glory seem to be everywhere. And uh, okay, I'll continue. Right, we started our men's group again, haven't we? It didn't finish. Okay. Oh, but rather I, I jo started joining again. <laughs> so men's group is on 7:30 on Zoom. We still continue to have our prayer meeting on Zoom on Friday, 7.30, and here in person. So it's, it's very interesting that we are doing it together, that those who cannot come can join on Zoom, and those who can come can join our prayer meeting. And so it's in, like on Friday and the week before, it's a Friday before, some will pray on Zoom, we call them to pray out, and then we will pray in person. Isn't that such a good thing? Our God is good. He doesn't leave anyone out. So Bible study is still on Zoom, but prayer meeting is in church and on Zoom. So if you cannot come, please don't feel guilty, even though I'm tempted to push guilt on you, but I want to resist. <laughs> please don't feel guilty. Join anywhere you can. If you join on Zoom, it's as valid as when you join in church. Because now we have we are church meeting in two places, one in church here, one on Zoom. So please join us and invite people to join us. Amen. And the, the women's prayer group continues also on Zoom. Uh, Tuesday, 7.30. And then, of course, next week, Sunday, we'll be here. And uh, we might meet outside, weather, you know, depending on weather. Hasn't God been good to us? Yes. With this lovely, lovely, beautiful weather. Now, some of you are having to wear sunglasses and put it, you know, trying to protect your eyes from this bright, lovely weather. God is good. Uh, before we take our offering, I just want us to pray. I want you to pray, not, not pray out, pray in your heart. We've been told that coronavirus is spreading, the infection rate is climbing high. But we as Christians, we have a power and the authority to pray for, for the rate to go down. How many of us are ready to pray for that? You know we have the power to do it. You know our, the God that is in us is able to do it. He's done it before, and he will do it again. So we want to pray in stealth, and we are told that the infection rate is very high. It's probably the highest in Surrey, and uh, the government is keeping an eye on us. It's a good thing they are, because uh, we are able, so that we can prove that our God is faithful. When we pray today, I will continue to pray in our home. We're going to see the rate fall down and go down that you be safe enough for people to come out again amen so i want you to if you can stand up because you might not be able to pray out let's stand up as a sign that we are doing this together i want you to pray in your heart if you can let's just start to command in Jesus name with the authority of the lord in our heart in our lips to start to instruct and command the rate of infection to come down in the name of jesus and as you believe, as you pray, believe that God will answer your prayer, that He's answering it and He's going to come down. Not just in spell form or in sorry, 
and wherever you, you live or come from, but across this whole nation. We want to gain back uh, uh, control again. We want infection rate to come down as death rate continue to fall even further so that students can continue to go to school, people can continue to go to work, businesses can continue to flourish. But in the midst of all this, we want the focus to be on the Lord himself. That is the Lord that is doing it. We want you to pray for all those scientists who are working in the lab to test uh, all the uh, uh, samples that are sent to them for, for coronavirus tests. We want to pray for all those who are working in the hospitals, those who are politicians making decisions, those who are working at the local level, those who are working at the central level in various regions. Let's just pray for them. Let's ask God's grace to come upon them in the name of Jesus. And let's ask that the power of God will walk through them to bring blessings to this nation in Jesus' name. And while we do that, I'll call Pastor Niger to come, just come and uh, run this prayer up for us, please. and the creator of all things. You alone are able. There's nothing too difficult for you, O oh God. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And this morning we pray for healing to flow through our land, Lord. Father, we thank you that even though we might be feeling overwhelmed, that you are never overwhelmed, that you are never taken by surprise, Lord. But Father God, that even in the midst of this pandemic, you are still in control. And so Father, we just want to come before you today as your people and stand in the gap on behalf of this nation, Lord, on behalf of this Bala, on behalf of this estate, Lord. We want to stand in the gap and call upon your name that Father God, you would bring a turnaround with regard to this virus, Lord. Father God, instead of infections going up, we would see them coming down. Father God, we would see a continual reduction in the, in the number of deaths, Lord. Father God, we want to pray, Lord, for those public servants, Father God, who are serving, Lord, uh, in the various capacities, Lord, whether it be in the hospitals, whether it be teachers in schools, Father God, whether it be bus drivers, Father God, those who uh, are in the shops who are serving, Lord. All these people, we bring them before you, Father God, and we ask your divine protection over them. We thank you, Father God, for their commitment, for their service. And I pray, Father God, that your anointing would rest upon them, that even as they would serve the people, Lord, they would serve, Father God, with love, with patience, and with grace, because it would be a divine service, Lord, that has been, uh, Lord, ordained by you. Father God, I pray for the leaders of this land, that you would give them wisdom. Father God, the decisions and the choices that they need to make, Father. I just pray for wisdom, Lord. I pray, Father God, also, Lord, for a spirit of unity, that, Lord, we would rise up as one people, and that together we would stand together, Father God, with our hearts and our minds and our hope and our confidence placed in you, because you alone have the words of life. Father, I thank you for this day that we can gather together like this and lift up your name. Your word tells us that, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. And I pray, Lord, that even, even though we might be gathered in unfamiliar circumstances, Lord, be it outside here, Lord, in this churchyard, or be it in our homes, Lord, um, tuning in over, um, Lord, um, the internet. I thank you, Father God, that you are still at work. And I pray, Lord, that even as we would continue, Lord, your anointing be upon Pastor Desmond, as he shares your word, that you would speak into our lives, Lord, a timely word, a word that is relevant to us right now, that we leave this place not just encouraged, Lord, but empowered to walk in the truth that makes us free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Nigel.
we're going to quickly take our offering. And for those of you who are giving online, please continue to do so. Uh, for those who are giving cash, um, hear me, we arrange that. Meanwhile, let's pray, let's just bless our offering. wanted to share encouragement for what we were just praying. Matthew 8, 23 to 26, Jesus calms a storm. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. He did that then, he can do that with this um, storm of coronavirus. Amen. Please, if you are giving online, uh, if you don't have the information, please, it's on the screen now. Glory is on the screen. Yes, it's on the screen now. And for those of you who are joining online, we just want to welcome you again to this service. And may the Lord continue to bless you and touch you in many ways. Father, we commit this time into your hands as we bring our offering to you. Offering of thanksgiving. We're here to thank you for what you've done for us, for your provision, for the way you keep looking after us. That in this great time of drought, when people are losing their jobs, Lord, you still provide for us. So blessed be your name, O oh God. We ask, Lord, that you will, at this time, bless your people. You know what our needs are. We commit them to you. We don't depend on our employer or on our business, but we trust in you to look after us. And so we we'll pray that over the next few days and weeks and months, that our faith will grow stronger as we depend on you totally. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. While they are collecting the offering, I want to start to prepare for my sermon. Are you ready to hear God's word? Just wave. Don't chat. Don't talk. Yeah, good. Thank you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Good 
in the land of the living. And so we thank you for your blessings upon our lives. The greatest thing we have in our life is you. You have been faithful. And we come today to say thank you for your faithfulness. And Lord, as I share this word on the goodness of the Lord, I pray that your spirit will bless the hearers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are at home, when I say hallelujah, just type amen on your, on your uh, uh, Facebook. We want to get response. And uh, for those of you who are here, if you can't shout hallelujah, wave, clap, give me a thumb, do something to, you know, just to respond. Amen. Praise God. The title of my sermon, like I've said, is The Goodness of God. The goodness of God. I want to read from the book of Lamentation chapter 3 verse 21 to 24. Lamentations 3 21 to 24. That this I call to mind. Therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. I don't know how many of you love the book of Lamentations. How many of you enjoy reading the book of Lamentations? I think it's just one or two people. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, this is... That Jeremiah, some of you are very, very, you find hope even in, the, in such depressing thing because you are full of faith. He says, Jeremiah was talking about the children of Israel. In the book of Jeremiah, you see, Jeremiah was prophesying what God was saying that children of Israel would be moved from their land and moved to captivity for 70 years. And at this time, this was starting to happen. And why Jeremiah was declaring the prophetic word of God saying, come on, stop building your houses. You need to get ready to become slave in another land. Hallelujah. How many of you love that? Say, wave your hand if you love to be a slave. No. Okay. Amen. So this was the Jeremiah's message. You could see why he wasn't a popular man. You know, they, they, even those who believe what they were saying, they didn't want to receive it. He was put in a dungeon. He was put in a what used to be uh, uh, 
a well that was dug and was put all the way there because it was declaring the word of the Lord. But at this time, Jeremiah was lamenting because he was seeing the suffering of the people. People are suffering today. I don't know if you know anyone that died in this coronavirus thing. I know a few. I know, I know a family that's related to me, that a man that lost two of his sons within a couple of weeks and they were buried together. There are families that, I was speaking to a pastor friend of mine in the church where his father-in-law pastors, the, the family they lost quite a few people in East London. There's a family that lost the dad and the mom and the children were young. They are all, both of them doctors to coronavirus. There are people that have lost their jobs. There are people that are struggling to pay their rent. That there are people that are worried. They are not sure what's going to happen. There is confusion everywhere. There are those who had a job, who thought they had a job before this whole thing started, and now they don't anymore. It's terrible news. But in the midst of this, after Jeremiah said of all these horrible, terrible, evil experience that people was, were going through, he still was able to write this. But this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. As Christians, as believers, where is your hope right now? In this time of great trials, where is our hope? Do you know that the people out there will not find hope anywhere else? And many of us, we are praying, Lord, can you come down and bring hope and bring encouragement? But the truth is, God will not come down. You know why? Because you are here. God's got you here. God's got you here to bring hope to people. Jesus finished his work. He went to heaven. He said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So the, you, you, God, you are God's channel of hope right now to the hopeless. So we have to start to change how we think. Many of the prayers that we pray for many years, God hasn't answered. He has not answered before. He will not answer again. Whatever God has assigned to you, he will not do it for you. He will empower you to do it, but you need to do it. If you see places where people say, Lord, Oh God, we need the revival again. Send down revival power like you send with, uh, 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 when the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Ghost came once. He stayed here. Why, do you keep, why does God need to send what we already have? He's here. Let's change our prayers. Lord, use me. It's got to be, Lord, use me. Oh, Lord, we need revival. Come down, Holy Spirit. He's here. He cannot come down further. He's here. It sounds theological. It sounds good prayer. It sounds holy. But it's wrong. Because it's not true. Esther, come here. I'm just deviating from my sermon. Uh, I might not need to use all the slides because the time is gone. This is my phone. It's Esther. But say, let's say this is my phone. Yeah? And Esther needs a phone. And Esther has been praying for a phone for a long time. Yeah? And then I came and said, Esther, this phone is now yours. When I give you a new, brand new phone, what are you supposed to do? Thank you. Yeah, you are with me. We said we are from the same household, so that's why I'm using that. And so, will it be wise for Esther to now take this phone and go and see that and wear your mask now and then still be praying, Lord, please give me a phone. Lord, I want a phone that I can use to, to connect with the church on Zoom and, and WhatsApp. Lord, please give me a phone in the name of Jesus. I bind every demon that's holding my phone back. The, the, the demon is not holding your phone back. It's just stupidity. You don't know that the phone is supposed, it's now yours. 
you know, we bind the demon that operates in Spelton, every the satanic power. It's, the phone is in your hand. Nothing to do with Satan. It's ignorance. We have it now. Remember the story we said a few weeks ago, John, Peter and John said, they saw the lame man. They said, silver and gold we do not have. What we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. We, there are people who are not where we can pronounce healing on them. Hallelujah. Jeremiah said, I find hope. So my first slide today is, God's goodness is eternal. See, God's goodness never changes. In good times, in bad times, it's the same. Your experience might be different, but God's goodness is the same. God is good in good times. God is good when you are going through trials. God is good when people are dying. God's goodness never stops. Hallelujah. God's goodness never stops. You say, oh, if his goodness never stops, how come I lost my dad in coronavirus? But you were in the same house with, in the, with your dad. You did not get infected. You did not die. What do you think that was? God's goodness. You say, I lost my job. And, and, uh, uh, but, but the truth is, you are still in the same house that you lived before when you, didn't, when you had a job. You are still eating. You are doing well. Your life continues. You don't have a job, but God is still sustaining you. God is good, and he's good all the time. And because God is a God that doesn't change, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His goodness doesn't stop. His goodness never stops. In midst, see Job, Job said, though he tests me, yet will I serve him. God took Job through difficult times. But do you know that every time, if you look at the story of Job, God said to Satan, you cannot touch his life. What is that? God's goodness. <laughs> Otherwise, why do you think you are still alive today? If not for God's goodness. You think that Satan would spare a second before taking you up? <laughs> if he could. But the truth is, God is still good to you. And his goodness, the good news is eternal. It doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so God's goodness is more than enough. God's goodness is sufficient. God's goodness is available all the time. And the second point is God is good. It's not just that God is good all the time, but God is good to you. Put your hand on your chest, say God, you know, don't need to say God is good or at home say, send the test, say God is good, but you just, you know, in your heart say to yourself, God is good to me. The truth is, hasn't he been good to you? Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done because God is good. God's goodness is all around you. God's goodness is in you, upon you, and all over you. Why don't you open your eyes and look around? God is good to you. Open your eyes and look. You remember the story of Elisha and his servant when they were in this place and the enemy came and they camped, they camped around them with chariots and horses. They wanted to arrest Elisha because he was giving information, was prophesying to the king to say the enemy, the, the, uh, the Arameans are planning to invade you, but don't go through that place because they are there, avoid there and go this way. And uh, the king of Aram said, let's arrest this guy. And he came with huge army to arrest a single man. But the good news was that Elisha's eyes was open. Is your eyes open? Elisha, Elisha's servant woke up and saw the army of the enemy. And he was afraid. And for Christians, sometimes that's all we see. We see all the evil happening around us. The enemy, the enemy, the enemy. But we forget that there is also a God that is protecting us. <laughs> and Elisha, when the servant came, my Lord, look at, we are dying, we are perishing. Elisha said, they that are with us, he that is greater than all these guys. Say, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes to see. And when he opened his eyes, he saw. <laughs> what can you see, friends? What can you see? 
in this time you have to learn how to look. If you look the wrong way, you will see the wrong thing. See, you have to determine what you want to see. How you look determines what you see. If you are looking for evil report, it's around you, that's all you will find. If you're looking for good news, that is all you will see. You need to train your eyes to look. You need to train your ears to hear. That's why you need to protect what you see and protect what you see. You know, guard your heart, the Bible says, with all diligence. You know, you have to be careful where you look. I, I, on Facebook, I, I just skip things. There are things I don't read. Even if it's things shared by people I like, well, I love, you know, sometimes even my wife, if, I, if it's not edifying, I don't read it. I delete it. I don't read it. I protect. See, if you don't, it's what you let in that will come out of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You see, when the pressures of life come and compresses you, it's what is in here that will come out. What do you allow in here? If it's good news, it will, when, pre, when life presses you, the good news will spill out. If it's terrible things and fear, when you are pressed, it's like an orange. If you press for an orange, what happens? It's orange juice. It won't suddenly produce mango juice, you know, will it? It's what is in there that comes out. And so when you see, see, how do you react when things happen? That tells you what is really inside of you. It's what comes out of that pressure that is real in your heart. And if you don't like it, then you can change it. Change how you look at things. Change how you hear. Change what you dwell on, what you meditate on. I cut things off. I fight a war in my heart to make sure that what I keep in my heart is what I want to declare. Church, we have been empowered. The goodness of God is inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit, the God of gods, the King of kings, the one who is able to do all things. God placed him inside of us. And yet we lock him in a room and live our life without him. See, uh, the other day I was looking at one of these frames in, my, in, in, our, in our bathroom uh, downstairs. And it's one of these things I've always quoted. You know, uh, God is the, the head of this house. You know, no, God is the head of this house. How many of you have seen that? A silent listener to, to, to every conversation. You know, and I, and I thought, suddenly, as I, because God has been working in my heart the last few months, I just thought, that's wrong. God should not be a silent listener. He should be an active participant in my house. If God is kept quiet, it means he's not the one leading. God should be speaking to my heart. God should be speaking about my family, about my children. It should not be a silent listener. But unfortunately, in many of our lives, God is a silent listener. That's God to change. You know, touch yourself and say, you say in your heart, that's God to change. Hallelujah. I, I want to bring this sermon to a close by saying to you, point that you are an evidence of God's goodness. You. He saved you. He redeemed you. You have eternal life. You are an evidence of God's goodness. If these people are going to experience goodness, it's got to be you demonstrating it. A few days ago I was praying Really, this is my last point, and I'll finish. Uh, it's not a point. I was praying. I was actually praying in my United States of America for the, you know, the election, and I was saying, I was really praying, and uh, I was saying, Lord, can you speak to me about what you do in America? What do you want? And you know what God said to me? I prayed and prayed, nothing was happening. And one day I woke up and he started to speak. He said, this month, I four years ago I picked Donald Trump to be the president because I wanted to change some things. He said, against all odds, he won. The Republican uh, machinery, the Democratic machinery, and all the, everything they worked against him, he won. I put him there. He said, but this time, I have rejected him. 
But there are many preachers in America that are still preaching it. I'm declaring it because I'm taking, talking about God's goodness. We have to, sometimes we tread so carefully in case we don't get it right, so that in case they will find us out. And I told, I said, God said, you need to speak up. They said, because when I put him, they said, now he's there, he's doing everything to stay there against all odds. He's forgotten that I put him there. I put leaders and Christians around him to direct him. He said, because he wants to stay there, he's doing everything against my will. And he said, I have picked Joe Biden. I was thinking, I don't know this guy. He's a Roman Catholic. And God said to me, he said, he's gone through some difficult times in his life. And through that, I drew him close to me. He said, he knows me. I'm going to use him. I'm going to gather people around him. If he listens to me, I'll do great things through him. So then, so, see, what I'm trying to tell you is, you don't just hear, you, you, as Christians, we need to start to listen to what God is saying. What is God saying to you? You need to hear clearly from the heart of God. And then as soon as I finish that, you know what happened? I turn on the telly. I don't want to mention the names of these telly evangelists. Big guys in America that we look onto with Bible schools and all this other. And they came and they started to preach. I saw two of them. It was like from one to the next. And they, were, they started to preach. They were saying, you know, if you vote for somebody who supports, whose party supports uh, 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 um, abortion, right for abortion, you are committing abortion yourself. It was planned. And, they were, and so they were saying, it doesn't matter what. Donald Trump is, everybody know that he's not, he's not, uh, they said, you know, what they were saying was, everybody, you know, we know that he's not perfect. Then we, you know, we encourage you to vote for him. And then when I came, I was saying, Lord, these guys are sound Christians that I've already respected. Did I hear you wrong? And God said, no. He said, they had me wrong. See, the danger is that sometimes when you hear me make a statement or people that you respect, Sometimes even when you hear God speak to you, because I have not caught the vision that God has given you, it doesn't mean you change yours. If you hear from God, hold on to what you heard. Do you get the point I'm trying to make? You know, God is speaking at this time. Are you listening? Because it's, and then God spoke to me again. I, 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 and there was this lady, I was, I was praying. There was, I wasn't going to pray, I was lying there. There was in a vision and somebody was treating this lady. She had her bra on. It was as if they were carrying tests for breast cancer. And so they were facing this person treating God, and uh, it was the left, the right, right breast. And then I saw a switch that was there, and the switch was switched on immediately. And then you know what God said to me? He said, I have reset the button. This person with cancer, I have reset the button, and the person will be well. And he said, there is an anointing upon you, upon this church, to start to pray for people with cancer, especially breast cancer, and they are going to start to receive healing. That's good news. And I'm sharing with you today, as you live here, and you hear of anybody with cancer, don't start saying, Lord, if it be your will, it is his will. Declare it over them. Don't bring them to Pastor Desmond. Don't bring them to prayer meeting. You pray for them. As you pray for them, they will be healed. How many of you want to take this good news out? It is good news. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that we are carriers of good news. As you speak into our lives, we go out and declare what you declare in our life to others. And so I pray that every single one of us at the sound of my voice, that as we step out this week, we'll be looking for opportunities to give out the good news, the goodness of God in our lives to others. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go out and share the good news. So let's uh, share the grace together and then the worship team can just pray us out. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.
Jesus, Messiah. 